All right, so the last question was a little bit easier, so we're going to do a little bit harder one now. And I know you're thinking, man, if I wanted that last one was not easy, my brain is still fried, and I watched it yesterday. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, this one, hopefully this one will help kind of put some of those other ideas together. You know, when I see my third or fourth one of this, that's when it really starts to kind of click for me and say, okay, I think I know what's going on now. So let's do a third one, and, and hopefully you'll say the same thing. I, I kind of got the idea of what's going on now. Now, you guys are much smarter than I am, so you probably figured it out by the first or second one. But here we go. Step one, same as always, we're going to find the first term. Okay, so we're going to show that this works once. Now, you know what? It would be really, really nice if we put this one in, and it didn't work. Because if it didn't work... <sighs> If it didn't work, that means we wouldn't have to do mathematical induction. But what's the fun of that? Come on. So we're going to go from r equals 1 up to 1 of r times 2r plus 6. And that's, of course, equal to 2 thirds. And I'm putting 1 in for n. So I'm going to go 1 times 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus oh, 1 plus 5. And so we're going to work that out. Now, the sum of the first terms from r equals 1 to 1 means that really we only have one term, which is r being 1. So I can rewrite this as 1 times 2 times 1 plus 6. And then we go, OK, 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 5 is 6. So we've got 2 thirds times 12. On this side, I've got 2 plus 6, which is 8 times 1. So that's 8. And 2 thirds of 12. Well, 2 times 12 is 24 divided by 3 is also 8. So it does work out. The first domino has fallen. And so now we need to go on and say, OK, well, that means we're going to assume that it works for k. So we're going to go from r, r equals 1 to k of r times 2r plus 6. And that right there will be equal to 2 thirds times k, times k plus 1. Yeah, you're going to write this a lot of times right now. Plus k plus 5. All right? <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the really long one yet. So you now have an expression that we're going to assume is true. Now, you may remember in the previous videos, this was very important when we... Oh, no! OK, problem solved. Crisis averted. Now, we're going to go ahead and we will be plugging this in to our next equation because, of course, step three is to show that it works for k plus 1 to show that all the other dominoes are going to fall down. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about with dominoes, then watch the first video, and I kind of introduced that idea. So we're going to go from r equals 1 to k plus 1 for r times 2r plus 6 equals... Two thirds. Oh no, I'm gonna write all this out. Then why are you making us do it? Make the I want it. Okay, fine. It's fun. This is fun. We like doing this. Actually, it is kind of cool. K plus one, plus one, and then of course the uh, k plus one plus five. Okay, so we've written the whole thing out. We're going to do a couple of things at the same time, OK? So we're going to work with the left-hand side just a little bit. We need to rewrite this in such a way that it's easier to work with. You may remember in the first video, we took that sk plus 1, and we rewrote it as the first sk, the, some of the first k terms, and then we just wrote down that last term. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to rewrite this as, stop beeping on me. OK, there we go, from r equals 1 to k of r to r plus 6. And then we're just going to add on that last term, right? Uh, sorry, k plus 1. Because this would be the sum of the first k terms from 1 to k plus the term after k, which is k plus 1. So that's what we got, plus the last term. On this side, I'm just going to simplify that mess just a little bit so that I've got k plus 1 times k plus 2 times k plus 6. Now, I know you're thinking, how in the world is this going to look like that? And some of you are like, oh, yeah, I know how to do that, Mr. Barwater. So we're gonna, I'm going to go through it anyway, just, to, just for the fun of it. Recognize that this 
is that there? Do -do 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 -do, which means we can replace it with this do -do 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 here, so that we're going to rewrite it as 2 thirds k times k plus 1 times k plus 5. And then this term right here, uk plus 1, is just this with k plus 1 in it. And so that means I need to go plus k plus 1 times 2 times k plus 1 plus 6. Right? Just like that. Everybody okay so far? Everybody okay? No problems? No problems? Okay, and we're trying to prove that this is equal to that right hand side right over there. So, one of the things that we're going to do is we are going to rewrite this term right here. Okay, I see a common k plus 1, and you know what? You can pull that out at the same time if you want, but this right here needs to be simplified. This needs to be 2k plus 2 plus 6, which is going to be 2k plus 8. All right, so I'm going to rewrite that first just because my brain needs things a little bit more organized than most of your brains. My brain is not that organized. It's kind of skillywampus sometimes. And so I need to make sure that I've got everything written down. And so I've got 2k plus 8. Even though I may do a couple of things in my head, I've, I've really got to write it out this way. So now I'm going to take the common factor, which is the k plus 1. I'm going to put it in front. So I'm going to go k plus 1. Right? I'm going to put that in parentheses so I don't forget. And then I'm going to have 2 thirds k times k plus 5. And then I've got plus 2k plus 8. Okay, so it's starting to kind of look like this, right? I've got it, I've got the k plus 1 down. Remember, I'm trying to make it look like this. I'm trying to make it equal to that. So I've got the k plus 1. I've got the 2 thirds k plus 2 and k plus 6 that I still need to deal with. So how in the world can I get this stuff in here to look like a product like that? 6 k plus 2 times k plus 6. Well, the answer is, is that we're actually going to take this and we're going to distribute it and then we're going to add the like terms to make a quadratic that we can factor. Oh, I wish I would have thought. Oh, wait, I did think of that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go k plus 1. We'll go ahead and distribute this, which will give us 2 thirds k squared plus 10 over 3 k plus 2k plus 8. And what we need to do is put the like terms together. Now you've got a couple of options. Some people will put the, option, the uh, like terms together right now. And what some people will do is they'll take out the two-thirds first because they just hate dealing with fractions. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take two-thirds out of each of these four terms so that I don't have to worry about fractions anymore. So this is going to turn into two-thirds. You'll notice that there's a two-thirds in front anyway. That's the real reason why I'm taking it out, not because I hate fractions. Actually, back in like fifth grade, I was in the literary festival, and I was the city champion in fractions. I whipped everybody. So anyway, this will go back to 5k. Now, this, I'm going to take 2k, and I'm going to divide it by 2 thirds, right? And so 2k divided by 2 thirds is the same thing as times 3 over 2, which is going to be 3k. So I'm going to have a plus 3k after I take 2 thirds out. And same thing here, I'm going to go 8 divided by 2 thirds, or times 3 over 2, which will turn into 12. I think I've seen that before. Where did I see 12? Oh, there's a 12! I've seen 12 before. I knew I saw 12. Okay, so from here we can put the like terms together, that's 8k, and this magically, not magically, math is not magic, sometimes it's magical, this will factor to k plus 2, k plus 6. Note that 2 times 6 is 12, k times k is k squared, 2 times k and 6 times k add up to 8k in the middle, which means that I now have 2 thirds k plus 1, k plus 2, k plus 6, which is the same thing as the right-hand side, which means, therefore, yes. And you really shouldn't write, therefore, yes. You should say, therefore, this is true. But I'm out of space, so I'm just going to say, therefore, yes.
All right, there you go. 10 minutes, that was a hard one. It's done. And I should talk a lot. <laughs>